I believe the end of comic book movie dominance is upon us. Soon, the days of massive multi-billion dollar superhero punch-out blockbusters will be over. Because I believe comic book movies are dying. Now, what do I mean by this statement? Do I think they'll stop making superhero movies outright? No, of course not. However, I do believe that the era of all things superhero is swiftly coming to an end, and a new genre will soon rise to dominance. But first, in order to understand the future, we must first go to the past. Believe it or not, cinema is old. Like, really old. And back in the day, the very first assembly of photographs in sequential order to create a motion picture was a two second clip of a black man on a horse. Since then, we have come a very, very long way. And with the growth of the industry, so too did a plethora of film genres. You have things like dramas, comedies, musicals, etc. Whatever had been reigning supreme on the stage now had the chance to dominate the silver screen and reach a much broader audience. But like everything, audience preferences tend to change over time. And in an industry that is well over 100 years old, you can imagine the stuff we like today wouldn't fly back then and vice versa. A good way to track what audiences liked back then is to look at the box office revenue for each decade. And luckily, that tedious work has already been done for me in the aptly named article, the most popular movie genre in each decade. To quickly summarize the article, they basically wanted to explore just how audiences' tastes changed over time. And in order to do so, they looked at the top 10 highest grossing films of each year from the 1940s up to the 2020s. So let's go decade by decade, but first let me mention the cowboy in the room. Westerns were by far the most popular genre since the inception of film up until about the 60s and 70s. However, in terms of box office revenue alone, there weren't many Westerns reaching the top 10 highest grossing films for each decade, and the data presented only does just that. So just know in the background, Westerns are always prevalent and extremely popular. They're just not always the box office juggernaut we typically assumed they were. Also, keep that Western concept in the back of your mind for later. Anyway, in the 40s, the most popular film genre was dramas, or more specifically, either noir or romantic type dramas like Casablanca, Miracle on 34th Street, or Citizen Kane. In the 50s, during the golden age of Hollywood, there was a massive emphasis on big epic blockbuster type films such as The War of the Worlds, Ben-Hur, and The Bridge Over the River Kwai. The 60s saw a rise in comedies like Dr. Strangelove, The Pink Panther, and The Nutty Professor. The 70s had a resurgence in drama popularity, however, they were far grittier and less romanticized with movies like The Deer Hunter, A Clockwork Orange, and Taxi Driver. In the 80s, comedies came back with Airplane, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, and Ghostbusters. The 90s saw a rise in action movies such as GoldenEye, Terminator 2, and The Matrix. In the 2000s, animated films finally found their footing and started doing numbers at the box office with Shrek, Finding Nemo, and Ice Age. And then, in the 2010s, we saw the rise of comic book movies after the astounding success of The Avengers. Now, again, this is strictly looking at box office revenue for each decade. And yes, some of the movies in each decade's top 10s could fit into multiple genres. In this instance, they have just been narrowed down into one basic overarching genre. If you want a much more in-depth breakdown, I highly recommend reading the article. The link is in the description. So what does this data tell us? Well, audience taste obviously shift over time. But what's really interesting is that these popular genres typically only last a decade. They don't disappear when they're not popular anymore. They're just made far less. I mean, in the 2010s, despite the Marvel madness, we still got comedies, dramas, and hell, even westerns. The same goes for prior decades. Just because superhero films popped off in the 2010s doesn't mean they weren't being made in the 2000s or the 90s or the 80s. But why did superhero films all of a sudden become this global phenomenon? Well, it's a pretty simple answer they finally figured out how to make them. Comic book movies, or rather superhero movies, have had a long, tenuous, and complicated history. Hollywood never had faith in them. They basically thought superheroes were only for kids and made a handful of campy movies and a plethora of cartoons specifically to sell toys. That's what they thought superheroes were good for. Marvel and DC alike. Good quality storytelling was never a priority for these movies because they're just comic books and they didn't think it would have mass appeal. That is, until Iron Man proved them wrong. The MCU showed all of Hollywood that you could take these comic book characters and tell in-depth stories with deep characters in multi-movie spanning story arcs. The MCU, across all movies and shows, is currently 100 plus hours long and people have been following this story for over a decade. What Marvel did was embrace the source material. 
They didn't try to hide what it was. Marvel is weird, and they embraced that weirdness. I don't think Disney gets enough praise for doing this, but they trusted Kevin Feige, who loves Marvel Comics, to make movies about Marvel Comics. It sounds like such a simple concept, but for a lot of people in power, simple concepts are often the hardest decisions. So because the MCU decided to lean into superheroes, Iron Man is now a household name. You couldn't say that prior to 2008. However, in recent years, the MCU has been on a decline. After Avengers Endgame, box office revenue for multiple Marvel movies has been dipping. Forbes recently reported on this, stating that the share of adults who enjoy superhero movies ticked down slightly compared to a year ago. The poll found 36% of respondents enjoyed superhero movies, down from 41% last November. Self-identified Marvel fans who enjoy the movies also fell, dropping from 87% to 82%. While this doesn't seem like a big dip, I do believe it's a sign of what's to come. Speaking anecdotally, talking to casual Marvel fans, not super nerds like myself or the people watching this video, I've noticed a trend. They're just done with Marvel. They think it's peaked at Endgame and everything after is just kind of pointless. And speaking to my super nerd Marvel friends, I know plenty of them who aren't even caught up with all the new shows and movies. I've spoken about this on multiple videos, a few of which I'll link at the end of this, but Marvel basically is oversaturating the market without diversifying enough to make us want to continue our investment. It's all the same stuff and, well, we're just kind of getting tired of it. But it's not just Marvel's oversaturation that's lowering box office returns. Look at the history. One genre reigns supreme for about 10 years and another one comes in and usurps it. We've seen this time after time, decade after decade since the 40s. However, nowadays, genres aren't as clear cut as they used to be and what really sells now is intellectual properties. And big name comic IPs are all but used up. But you know what series of IPs hasn't really been tapped and have had a very similar life as comic book movie adaptations? Video game movies. Look at the history of video game movies and compare it to the history of comic book movies. They are nearly identical. Executives who greenlit these movies basically thought video games were only for kids and made a handful of shitty movies that are simply video game movies in name only. Or they're complicated tax write-offs and that's just, that's, that's just a whole other story. Look at Super Mario Bros, Resident Evil, and Doom for prime examples of video game movies that are simply video game movies in name only. But what's interesting is that the same thing that happened over at Marvel is now happening at video game studios. They are trusting the source material. They are embracing what they are and entrusting those who love the source to make them into movies and shows. Look at Arcane. Edge Runners, and The Last of Us. Those three properties are some of the best things on television right now. And you want to know why? Because the people who made it embraced what it was. They had passion for it, and passion breeds excellence. With how well The Last of Us specifically is doing right now, I would not be surprised if Sony greenlit many, many more projects. In fact, they already have. God of War, Days Gone, Death Stranding, and Ghost of Tsushima are all in the works. If Sony plays their cards right and actually adapts the source material faithfully, then I could see the next decade as the decade of video game adaptations. Hell, if Sony leads the charge with their IPs, then they will not only decimate the competition, but probably start pulling Marvel numbers at the box office. Because God knows their Marvel movies aren't doing that. You want further proof of that? Compare the Halo show to The Last of Us show. Microsoft is basically the DC of video game adaptations right now. Again, if they play their cards right, Sony can pull ahead of the competition and start running circles around them in the same way Marvel did with DC. Based on everything we've seen in the past few years, I truly believe that superhero movie dominance is at an end. They will not disappear outright, but more so become like the Western genre. Always popular in the background, but not a box office juggernaut anymore. Give it a handful of decades and then I can see superhero movies just kind of petering out. I would not be surprised if video game adaptations start to become a mainstay in film. If these adaptations keep this positive momentum going, then they will very easily take Marvel's crown. And I'm actually pretty excited about that. But what do you all think? Do you think this is the case, or do you think another genre will reign supreme? What game would be your dream adaptation? Does the Halo show just make you constantly depressed the more you... the more you think about it? Let's talk about it in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, take care.